Hi everyone, my name is Brittany of BrittanyJJones.com and I am so excited to be stepping in for Mimi G. She is currently traveling on business and asked me to step in to record the sew alongs for her new Summer Simplicity pattern 8890 as well as 8889. In this video, we're going to be sewing along to View B of Simplicity 8890 and I hope to bring you some Mimi G flair that we all know and love. So let's get started. Before we begin sewing, I want to go over all of the pattern pieces that we're going to need to cut out to make view B on this pattern. If you're wondering the types of fabrics that would work great for it on the back of the envelope, there's a list of suggested fabrics as well as the notions and the yardage that you need to purchase. The first pattern piece that we need to cut out is pattern piece number 14. This is the front and we need to cut one on the fold. Pattern piece 15, this is our front binding and we need to cut one. Pattern piece 16, this is our back and we need to cut one on the fold. Pattern piece 17, this is the drawstring and we need to cut two. And pattern piece 18, this is the armhole binding and shoulder strap and we need to cut two. Once you have all of your fabric and pattern pieces cut out and you've transferred all of your markings, we can start sewing. Our first step is to go ahead and make our darts on our front piece. So I'm going to go ahead and bring my broken lines with my darts together and pin them in place. I'm going to make sure that I put the pins through both sides of the dart so that I know it's even. I'm going to pin my other dart the same way and I'm going to take it to the machine. I'm going to start sewing at the widest point of the dart down to the point. Once I get to the point, I'm just going to sew off. I'm not going to back stitch here. I'm going to tie a knot. So let's go ahead and sew our darts in place now. Go ahead and sew your dart the same way and then we can press it down. Once we have the darts sewn and pressed down, we can go ahead and reinforce this large circle that we transferred up here at the center front on the neck edge. We're going to stitch at a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance and we're going to stitch an inch to each side of it making sure that we go through the large circle. So let's go ahead and reinforce the neck edge right now. Now that we have the center front reinforced at that small dot, we can move on to the next step. For the neck edge that we just reinforced, we're going to go ahead and grab our scissors and we're going to clip right to the small dot, being sure not to clip through our stitching. So grab your scissors and clip right to the small dot. Again, make sure that you do not clip through your stitching. Now we can start working on our front binding. For our front binding piece, we're going to press under 3 8 of an inch on one of the long edges. So I have my seam gauge here and I'm going to turn under 3 8 of an inch on one of the long edges and press it down. Once we have the front binding pressed, we can go ahead and pin it right sides facing to the front neck edge of the dress. So with right sides facing, we're going to match up our small dots and our large dots and pin there. So I'm gonna pin here at my small dot in the center Now I'm going to pin the rest of the binding in place. Once we have the binding pinned on, we can go ahead and stitch it in a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Once you get down here to the center, make sure that you pivot when you get to that point. So let's go ahead and stitch the binding in place now. Wow. 
Once we have the binding sewn on, I wanna go ahead and trim it down just a little bit because we're going to press the binding up and then fold it over the seam so that it's covering the stitching and then we're gonna stitch. So I do wanna kinda of eliminate some of that bulk. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim down just a little bit of that seam allowance. Okay, now that I have trimmed some of that seam allowance off, I'm gonna go ahead and press my stitching up to the binding. Once we have the binding pressed up, now we wanna go ahead and fold it toward the inside so that it covers the stitching. And then we're gonna take our pins and pin it on the outside like so. So now I'm gonna go ahead and continue folding the binding toward the inside to cover up our stitching. I'm gonna place my pins on the outside. So let's go ahead and pin your binding in place now. We can go ahead and stitch the binding now close to this pressed edge. So I'm gonna use my fingers to make sure that I'm getting as close as I can to this pressed edge. And remember, we need to pivot once we get down here to the center. So let's go ahead and stitch our binding now. Once you have the inside of your binding sewn down, we can go ahead and move on to the next step. I'm gonna go ahead and press the neck edge. Now right here at our point, we're going to stitch it on the inside, so with the right sides facing. On the upper edge of our binding where our small dot is, we're just gonna stitch diagonally from the upper edge of the binding to the small dot. I'm not gonna be stitching down here on the dress, it's only gonna be for the binding. So I'm gonna go ahead and start stitching at the upper edge and stop right at the small dot. When doing the diagonal stitch, it may be easier to start down here at the point and work your way up to the top of the binding. So I'm gonna go ahead and start down here, closer toward the dress and work my way to the top. Okay, once you have sewn the binding diagonally, we can go ahead and sit the front to the side and begin working on the back. Okay, here's my back piece. And the next step is for us to go ahead and create the buttonhole on our back. Before I create mine though, I do want to apply a little bit of interfacing just to stabilize that area because when it comes to buttonholes and buttons and zippers, you always want to add a little bit of stability. So I have just a thin piece of interfacing here. This will not change the weight of my fabric. It's a lightweight interfacing. So I'm just gonna go ahead and fuse that right over that to stabilize for my buttonhole. Now that I have it stabilized, I'm gonna go ahead and create my buttonhole. All right, still working on our back piece. Along the upper edge of the back, we are going to press in 3 fourths of an inch. So I have my seam gauge here. I'm gonna go ahead and press in 3 fourths of an inch all the way along the upper edge of the back. I'm just gonna continue pressing in three fourths of an inch. And once I have that pressed, I'm gonna come back and press under a quarter of an inch on this raw edge. So let's go ahead and do all of our pressing now. Once you have the upper edge of the back piece pressed in, it should look like this. You should have pressed under again, three fourths of an inch, and then you should have pressed under a quarter inch of that raw edge and pressed that all down. So now we can go to the machine and stitch close to this lower pressed edge. So let's go ahead and do that now. Once you have that sewn down, that creates the casing for our drawstrings. So next we can go ahead and start working on our drawstrings. So I'm gonna put this piece to the side. So here are my two drawstring pieces and what we're gonna do is they're right size facing. We're gonna fold them lengthwise together and we're gonna stitch them in a scant quarter of an inch seam allowance. Now that scant quarter of an inch seam allowance is really just, um, simply put, it's a stitch that comes up a hair or two short 
than the actual quarter of an inch seam allowance. So my machine actually has that stitch program on it. So I'm going to show you what my needle does. It moves over just a little bit so I can get the scant quarter of an inch seam allowance sewn. So I'm going to show you what that looks like and maybe you'll be able to move your needle over just a little bit so that you'll be able to sew it as well. So let's go ahead and do that now. So right now my needle is in the default center position. I have not moved it. And you can also see that the fabric is lined up with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So now I'm gonna go ahead and push the button on my machine that will set it to the scant quarter of an inch seam allowance. So you see how it moved just a little bit. It went from the center and it came over. This will be the exact quarter of an inch seam allowance because the needle is in the middle. It's in the default position. But once you push the scant quarter of an inch seam allowance, the needle moves over so it's not a perfect quarter of an inch seam allowance anymore so like I said it just comes up a hair or two shorter than the actual seam allowance so that is how we're going to be sewing our drawstring so I'm going to go ahead and do those now just wanted to give you a close-up again of where the needle is and where the center that red dot for the center of my needle is you can see that it is over it is no longer in the center. So I just sewed the drawstrings at a scant quarter of an inch seam allowance. I'm gonna go ahead and stitch my other drawstring the same way and then turn it right side out. Okay, here are my drawstrings. I have them sewn. I've also turned them right side out. Now we can go ahead and grab our back piece to our dress. I'm going to attach a safety pin to one end of one of the drawstrings. And now I'm going to put this through the buttonhole opening and just pull it through to one end. Once you've pulled the drawstring through, I'm going to go ahead and remove my safety pin. And I'm going to pull my drawstring in just a little bit so that it is even up here with the upper edge of the casing. So now I'm going to go ahead and stitch right across the end of this casing, making sure that I catch the drawstring. So I'm going to go ahead and do that stitch now, and then we will insert the other drawstring throughout the other side and stitch that one across right at the edge the same way. I just stitched across the casing, making sure that I catch in the drawstring as well. So now I'm going to go ahead and do the other side of the drawstring the same way and move on to the next step. All right, now that we have the drawstring sewn down up at the top of the casing on both sides, now we can take the ends of the drawstring and we're going to push these raw edges in. I'm going to get a pin to help me push these in. Once you have the raw edges in, you can take a needle and thread. I have my needle and thread here and we're just going to slip stitch these openings closed. Once you have the end slip stitch closed, you want to go ahead and do the same thing to the other side. So just push in the raw edges and slip stitch it closed. Once you have the ends of the drawstring slip stitch closed, now we can go ahead and stitch our front to back right sides facing on our side seams. So go ahead and line up your front and back, find your notches and pin in place. You want to go ahead and pin your other side seam the same way and then we can take it to the sewing machine and stitch it in a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. I have my side seam sewn and I've also finished them off with my serger. So now we can go ahead and sit the dress to the side and begin working on piece 18 which is our armhole binding and shoulder strap. For our armhole binding and shoulder straps, the first thing we're going to do is press under 3 8 of an inch on one of the long edges of the straps. So I have my seam gauge here. I'm gonna go ahead and fold in 3 8 of an inch and press it down. Once you have one of the long edges pressed in at 3 8 of an inch on both of your arm binding and shoulder strap pieces, we can go ahead and start working on the right side of our dress. So let's go ahead and find the right side of our dress. So this is my right side here. And the right side's facing, I'm gonna go ahead and grab one of my strap pieces and put the other to the side. 
I'm gonna find my markings because I transferred some circles down here, some small dots. So I'm gonna start here and match those up. The inner small dot goes to the side seam, so I'm gonna pin there. This first dot here on the binding, it matches up to this one on the end here, so we can pin there. Once you have it pinned, we can go ahead and stitch this in a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Now that we have it sewn, I'm going to go ahead and press this up toward the binding so that it's all facing up. Now we need to press up 3 8 of an inch on the other long edge of the binding. We also need to press in 3 8 of an inch on the short ends as well. So I'm going to fold in 3 8 of an inch, press it, and then fold the long edges and press. Now that we have both long edges of the binding pressed as well as the short ends, we're gonna take this inner pressed edge and we're gonna fold it over so that it covers the stitching, very similar to how we did the binding to the front of the dress. So we're gonna fold it toward the inside, cover up the stitching, and then we're gonna pin on the outside like so. So now I'm gonna continue pinning the binding down. I'm also going to fold this binding together and pin that as well because we will be stitching these pressed edges together. So I'm gonna continue pinning all the way down my binding. Now that we have it all pinned, we can go ahead to the machine and we're gonna stitch on the outside, making sure that we catch this inner press edge and then we're also gonna stitch the shoulder strap stitching those pressed edges together. So let's go ahead and do all the stitching now. All right, so I have my armhole binding and my shoulder strap sewn. You can see here that I continued that stitch all the way up the strap along the long edges as well as the short ends of the strap as well. So now working on the short end of the binding back here, I'm gonna take my ring and I'm gonna put it through the binding and I'm gonna fold this to the inside of the dress. We're gonna create a loop right here for the ring and now I'm gonna pin it down Now I'm going to take it to the machine and I'm going to stitch it close. So again, I'm taking the ring right here and I'm putting it through the short end of the binding. We're going to create a loop by folding this end to the inside. I'm going to pin it in place. Now I'm going to take it to the machine. I'm going to stitch it down and I'm going to stitch it again to reinforce it. So let's go ahead and do that now. Once you have sewn and created your loop for your ring, we can move on to the next step. Now that we have the right side of the armhole binding as well as the shoulder strap sewn, we can do the same exact steps to the left side. So with right sides facing, we're gonna grab our other binding and shoulder strap, match up our small dots, pin in place,
Now we can take it to the machine. We can stitch this in a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Once it's sewn, go ahead and do all the pressing, pressing up 3 8 of an inch on the other side of the long binding as well as on the short end. This time I went ahead and pressed the shoulder straps together as well as pressed that inner pressed edge over the seam. So now I can go straight to the sewing machine and go ahead and sew it all together. So let's go ahead and sew the left side the same exact way we did the right. Once the left side armhole binding and shoulder strap are sewn together, go ahead and grab your other ring and we're gonna create the same loop. So put the ring through the short end of the binding, fold it to the inside with the armhole binding and go ahead and stitch it and then stitch it again to reinforce it. All right, now that we have both of our rings sewed on, now we can go ahead and crisscross our straps. So I'm going to take my straps up here and crisscross them over. I'm going to make sure that I have them straight and not twisted. Now I'm going to take one of the sliders. I'm going to feed it through the slider. So in and then out the other side. Now I'm going to take the end of the strap and I'm going to put it through the ring. And now I'm going to take the end of the strap back through the bar of the slider. So I'm going to take it back through the underside of it. Once you have it through the other side of the bar on the underside of it, go ahead and pull it through. And we want to have about an inch pull through. So I'm just gonna get about an inch of it. So once it's extending about an inch, we can go ahead and stitch the end to the strap. So let's go ahead and stitch that now. So I have this strap all complete and you can see I have the slider on and I've also stitched the end to the strap. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the other one the same way. First, I'm gonna make sure my strap is not turned or twisted in any way. I'm gonna slide the end of it through both sides of the slider. Now I'm gonna take it through the ring. And now I'm gonna go back through the bar of the slider, the underside of it. I'm gonna make sure that the end is extending about an inch. And now I'm going to go ahead and stitch that inch that's extending to the strap. Once you have both of the sliders sewn on, the last thing for us to do is to go ahead and mark up our hem and sew our hem in place and we are all done with our dress. Well, that's all for the sew along. I really do hope that you all enjoyed it. Until next time, blessings everyone. Bye.